The Making of Gennady Golovkin, Boxing Silent Superstar We live in a morbid society here in America, says Abel Sanchez. We want to see somebody get hurt. We go to the bullfights not to see the bullfighter win, but to see the bullfighter get thrown up in the air. Gennady Gennadievich Golovkin came to America seven years ago from Germany, but he was born in Karaganda, a city in Kazakhstan, the Earth's ninth largest country, dotted with underground coal mines that once fed the machine of Soviet industry. He was an amateur champion in his country, won an Olympic silver medal in 2004 and spent years knocking out every fighter Europe could throw at him before he finally showed up at Sanchez's gym in Big Bear, California, looking for someone to help him break into the US. Market I explained to him what America wants and what America needs, and if he gave me the chance, without any interruptions, I could make him that, says Sanchez, a construction contractor from Tijuana with a steady stable of fighters in Big Bear. But he had something I couldn't teach, and that's the punch. That punch has elevated Golovkin to the biggest stage in boxing. His life has revolved around the sport for decades, but slowly it is beginning to revolve around him. He is the real thing, a superstar, a knockout artist, a brand with increasingly strong endorsements the custom hub lot watch, the Apple Watch ad. The Air Jordan gear. He walks with a placid swagger, in and out of the boxing ring, like a velociraptor in repose. In 37 professional fights, he has never lost, and he has never been knocked down. Golovkin also does not enjoy suffering fools, but he does it well. Those endorsements that feed his family's future and the promotional machine that sustains them require a modicum of forced smiles, a flurry of necessary evils. Boxing is not a business, Golovkin recently told a Mexican reporter during a day of interviews and a public, outdoor workout in 100 degree weather in Los Angeles. It is a sport. But it is a huge business. On Saturday, Golovkin will face off against Saul Canelo Alvarez in the year's biggest boxing match to feature two actual boxers. Millions of people will spend $69.99 to watch on pay-per-view. Thousands will spend even more to see it live in Las Vegas. The naked capitalist theater of the recent fight between Floyd Mayweather Jr. And Conor McGregor was a strangely attractive vortex of attention this summer, but the matchup with Golovkin and Alvarez is one the boxing world has wanted for years. The fight takes place on Mexican Independence Day, one of boxing's marquee weekends. It features Mexico's most famous and accomplished contemporary superstar in Alvarez, and one of the country's favorite outsiders in Golovkin a man who has claimed to fight Mexican style, 
with constant pressure, fearlessly, brutally. We as Mexicans remember the greats and how they fought. And the greats of today, or the elite of today Mexican fighters don't fight the way our heroes used to fight, Sanchez says. When, Golovkin, goes out there and puts it out on the line, the Mexican fan remembers those days when we used to have those kind of fighters. This spring, Alvarez defeated Julio Cesar Chavez Jr., the son of Mexico's most iconic fighter. The fight, a mismatch from conception, was essentially a staged showdown for Mexican supremacy of pay-per-view boxing, the level at which a boxer's checks get substantially larger. By defeating Chavez Jr., Alvarez set himself up as the legitimate heir of Mexico's boxing tradition. In Golovkin, who was favored by odds makers and adored by many Mexican fans he faces the perfect rival. If you were to search the world to find the two people who know the most about how to construct and conduct their lives, maximize what they can do as a prize fighter, these are the two guys, says Jim Lampley, the HBO boxing commentator who has seen many of Golovkin's fights from ringside. They train monastically. They live quiet, controlled personal lives. They are not out there presenting themselves crazily or for attention on social media. So now, after a summer of dick swinging from Mayweather and McGregor, boxing has a narrative less about spectacle and more about honor, Alvarez. The heavily marketed and relentlessly scrutinized son of a country that reveres its blood sport heroes, will meet Golovkin, a boy born in a soot-soaked corner of the Soviet Empire in a city that grew out of a labor camp, in a society shaped by the warped, paranoid mind of Joseph Stalin who grew into the man they call Triple G. The mines of Golovkin's home city were built on several hundred thousand backs, and knees, and crushed hopes. The miners working there, and the population tasked with feeding that labor, were internally exiled citizens, ethnic minorities from the empire's vast corners, farmers who resisted Stalin's forced collectivization of agriculture. People who maybe were suspected of thinking, or, God save you, saying, something negative about Soviet life packed into train cars and put to work. Babies in Karan Gada were kept a half hour's walk away from their mothers, who were required to walk there and back several times a day to nurse them until they were two at which point they were put up for adoption. Prisoners were tortured, some were tied up and left outside in the sub-zero winter temperatures. In the 1930s, the gulag camp system phased into a working-class city, choked with coal dust. In 1982, in a neighborhood called Mykiduk, twins were born to a Russian man and his half Korean wife. Nearly everyone of Korean descent in the Soviet Union was sent to Karaganda in 1937, anyone with ties to an external country was seen as a threat, regardless of their Soviet citizenship.